Palsy, Param, and Oval. Oval. Okay. Yeah. Good. And Palsy, Param is the most causes the most uh, fatal kind of malaria known as malignant malaria. Now let's come to malaria. Yes. Continue. Like for us, life cycle of a um, malaria is a cell or pathogen like virus bacteria. What do you call a single strand? Sorry? Uh, are you asking any question? Yes. What do you call a single strand of malaria cell? It's, it's uh, malaria is a plasmodium is a single cell, but it's a pathogen, right? It's a protozoa. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You like studied that. five kingdom classification in class 11th. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Continue. For a life cycle of a plasmodium, you need two hosts. One is a mm -hmm. human host and a mosquito host. Yes. It starts when a infected mosquito bites a human. And the plasmodium travels to blood and enters yeah. to liver cells where it yes. replicates and Perfect. produces asexually. Perfect. After... So the first site of infection is the liver cell. Correct. After after reproducing asexually, it goes back to the our red blood cells and infect it and reproduces sexually, forming gametes. Yes. So it's it does not no no no. It uh, it reproduces asexually, just some of these pathogens end up forming gametes. Gametes then fuse to uh, uh, cause sexual reproduction. To make gametes, you do not have to reproduce sexually. You understand? Like we are humans also have male and female different bodies. And in the different bodies, they are producing different male and female gametes, right? So once gametes are formed, their fusion or their union is known as sexual reproduction. Yes or no? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Cephala, yeah. So it is still asexual. In fact, in the human host, plasmodium does not enter into a sexual reproductive cycle, but it may end up forming gametes, gametocyte, the cells which act as gametes. Now they fuse, gametocytes fuse to form uh, uh, fertilize to form sporozoids. That happens in mosquito. For that part, the plasmodium depends on mosquito. Okay. Yes. Sir. In the salivary glands. Yes. So uh, let's take from here again. Explain this part again. Like when a mosquito bites a human again, the gametes so formed goes back through the go back go back to the mosquito where it. And they have been sexually reproducing into into plasmodium. Okay. Sporozoids, yes. And what about uh, how it? What what is the secondary site of infection in humans? Why do in malaria we get chills, fever, periodic chills, and periodic fever? That all that part you missed. Anyone would like to help your fellow colleague, batchmate? Show the blood. What, what, what the blood? Kindly elaborate. Sir, the helping be generous in help. Yes, Navi. Sir, the secondary site of infection is the blood. Yes, and why is this, why this, this periodic chills and fever are occurring in malaria? During this infection of the blood, they cause rupture of the RBCs. Uh -huh. Which releases hemozoin, which causes uh, the periodic chills. Yes, right. So, and take from there, finish the cycle. So, what is these gametocytes? Sexual stages or gametocytes develop in red blood cells. What is this? Are you there, Nabil? Am I audible, people? 
Yes, sir. Am I audible? I was asking what are the gametocytes? The sexual stages or gametocytes, what are they? The, uh, the gametes of the sporos, uh, the plasmodium. Yes. And, the uh, when, the, yes. when the mosquito will bite, they will go and they will enter into the mosquito and they will undergo sexual reproduction inside the mosquito. Yeah, but this time the mosquito has to bite an infected person which already yes. has these gametocytes, right? So second time, it, if a mosquito bites to a healthy person again, it might not get gametocytes, but can give sporozoids. You understand? But to complete, it also has to bite the infected person again and get these gametocytes. So one way to uh, tackle this disease of malaria, malarial disease, it, whenever someone is infected, you keep that person in isolation and treat that person, all their symptoms. So if you do not allow any mosquito to now bite on infected people, then the life cycle will get stalled, right? Of the plasmodium. The mosquito part will not happen. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, no, something. Yes, sir. Yes, Alia is writing in the chat. Alia, you also have some issues with mic or network. It will be great if you can contribute and to the discussion in the class. Okay, um, please do if you can. So then these gametocytes go back into the mosquito and fertilize in the salivary glands to form sporozoids again. These sporozoids enter a healthy person when the mosquito bites. So mosquito has to bite the person twice and once in a healthy state and then the same or the other person in a infected state. Okay. Okay, Alia, no issues. Please get your issues, mic issues fixed, okay, as soon as you can. Because if you're not participating in the class, I will not get to know of your um, performance, of how much you are understanding, how... Um, how much difficulty you are finding in the subject. So accordingly, I cannot modulate my teaching methodology for you. The whole concept, see, one thing I would like to point out, there is a reason that we at LearnEvio do not hold big classes, you know, and it's kind of a headache, but we still do it. You will see that in any batch, there will be not more than eight students, nine students, not more than that, never. I can just club all my batches of 50, 40 students and just give the same lecture. But I do it two, three, four times. Okay. It's because to facilitate interaction. And if you on the other side are just mute, then you are paying for the some for something, which is its USP. It's like you went to a tiger reserve to see a tiger. You saw everything except for the tiger and came back. You know, the kind of disappointment you feel. So this is the same model. We are giving you a chance to interact. You are just six people here, right? One is me, one is the Learnivio operations team's handle you can see, and you are six people, if you can see that, I don't know. So six people, all the freedom to discuss, get your doubts, be vocal, participate. That, that's the point of this class. Otherwise, if there would have been 60 people, you, you still were listening to the same thing that I'm saying. But then 60 people, all of you, even if you want, I cannot communicate with all of you. I cannot discuss with all of you. Okay. So we can make a model. We can have a vision about classes and teaching, but whether it's going to be successful or not, that depends on you as students. Okay. You can only extract as much as you want from a teacher. Okay. So please do that. You know, it's for your benefit only. That's why we keep the batch sizes small. That's the whole point, personalized education. If a tutor comes to your home and you are just silent the whole class and only the tutor is speaking, there's no point of that one-on-one -on -one teaching, right? So we are trying to reciprocate something like that. So please, everyone who's not speaking or have mic issues, please get it fixed at the earliest on an urgent basis. Okay, so is the, is the malarial disease clear to all of you? Any doubts, anything you want to ask? No? Okay, so in the in this protozoan diseases, 
one was plasmodium that we studied now let me take you to another pathogen which is known as entamoeba histolytica now you might be thinking what a big name how to i remember so let me break it up for you it's very simple the name is what the uh, what the pathogen does it is entamoeba it's like it's a big amoeba species you know and it stays in rivers fresh water ponds and if it enters any pores any human's body so it is freely living it's free living in the water it sometimes can get into a human body through drinking contaminated water or by you know taking long baths where the water is going into your nose and in your ear all the time and they can enter into your body through your nose and that is what has happened in many cases where people go to remote areas to trek and they get into a lake or a pond and take a bath there and then they get contaminated with entamoeba histolytica so you all have studied or at least drawn the diagram of amoeba at one or the other stages right you know amoeba everyone bill yes okay very well so this is the, this is amoeba now amoeba histolytica so this name just means amoeba and amoeba means a big amoeba histolytica the word histology have you heard the word histology the word histo is always for yes yeah, someone just unmuted the mic i was very happy to hear something from the other side so the word histo comes for tissue remember that okay if it is histology what is what is it what is histology Right so what about uh, histones, sir? Yeah. Sorry. Say histones. Histone is histone. Word histo. I'm just talking about the word histo. Histology. I'm not saying histonology. I'm saying histology. Histones are uh, positively charged proteins uh, that help in condensing the DNA. But histology is study of histo, right? so it's called study of tissue logy is study and histo is tissue so it's histology is study of tissue similarly here the word histo is for tissue and the word lytica lytic or lysis what does it means breakdown yes degrading or breaking down or eating digesting whatever word you want to use so basically what this entamoeba does is it's it it just need one host okay so write down what it is, is a proto uh, so what is lytica lytica is degrading or digesting so upon infection this amoeba destroys the tissues in which it infect basically it infects in the large intestines then it starts killing the tissues or uh, digesting the tissues of the large intestine and also it can also move to other organs if, if it gets very severe infection it can also move on in the brain okay via the body via the blood it can go into the brain and start eating the brain tissue so it starts eating the brain while the person is alive okay as a, so it's a very very um, serious a parasitic infection that that one can get so entamoeba histolytica is a protozoa right on it's a protozoan protozoan parasite and it affects the large intestine majorly it can also affect other organs but it majorly affects large intestine because that is where it first can enter uh, through contaminated food or water okay and in the beginning the most common thing that it causes when it enters it's not like it enters and starts killing the tissues start killing the tissue is a very very severe form of infection but in the in the very beginning it causes amoebiasis and once you get this you rush to the doctor and then doctors treat you 
they start killing these pathogens parasites in your body by giving you uh, medicines which goes into the large intestine and kill these pathogens so amebiasis is also known as amoebic dysentery so this is a dysentery which is very severe form of dysentery and uh, you can in this kind of dysentery so dysentery or diarrhea is where there is excessive loose motions right loose motions can be acute like for some short period but when it's longer we call it diarrhea or dysentery in amoebic dysentery because i told you they start killing the tissues they start digesting the tissues so you will also see blood in the stool okay so there will be abdominal pain they can be constipation also at times when it starts infecting because the intestines just constrict together then there is pain that starts cramps that start and then when dysentery starts it is with excess mucus and blood blood clots okay is it clear everyone sir why the mucus sir why, why the mucus mucus is secreted a lot in response to any kind of infection generally so when you see that you have a nasal infection the running nose has a lot of mucus it's not just water if it is a allergy you you will always see a difference between when we sneeze due to allergy or when we sneeze sneeze due to cold or a, a bacterial or a viral infection have you ever figured out the difference between the two the nose is running but in case of a allergy let's say you are sneezing because of allergy it's mostly watery right it does not have mucus yes, much of it but when it's a bacterial or a viral infection in the nasal cavity lots and lots of mucus is produced yes or no yes sir yeah the same thing happens in the intestines as well okay that's why and uh, it's like a defense mechanism they try to protect but then again you know they they are not able to because these uh, amoebas and amoeba histolytica is very very parasitic in nature and then abdominal pain cramps to stool with blood constipation all this is all this is obvious right so write down the symptoms constipation abdominal cramps pain stool with blood etc now as i told you it just requires it requires or it depends on single host to complete its life cycle okay but at times because everyone is not going to you know remote areas where this entamoeba histolytica can be present in some contaminated water body and having a bath there but still multiple many people even in cities do get amoebic dysentery so it, it has some carriers some other organisms can carry it to humans now it's different from plasmodium because plasmodium also depend on that other organism which is mosquito to complete its life cycle is it making sense everyone yes or no yes yes sir but in this case house flies common house flies are a mechanical carrier when i say mechanical carrier it means that the pathogen or the parasite is not dependent you know keep noting certain things when we are discussing that will also help you so it's not dependent on house flies to complete its life cycle it's free living it can directly come to human without or with the help of house flies so house flies act as right down house flies act as mechanical bed a mechanical carriers was saying mechanical barriers then we would have gone to chapter 4 <laughs> chapter 3 and 4 you remember mechanical barriers people yes sir it's a form of contraception so just re re replace c with b and the question changes so how do flies act as a mechanical carriers and transmit the parasite basically where are these parasites found you know 
it's always the chances are always that there has to be at least one infected person in the surrounding somewhere so when that infected person will do uh, will uh, excrete the fecal matter it's mostly it was very prevalent and common in rural areas because in rural areas still people don't have facilities to toilets right closed toilets and sanitized toilets so they defecate in the open you understand what i'm trying to tell you so if yes, someone sir. carries amoeba uh, and amoeba histolytica infection then their fecal matter will also have this histolytica and these flies they tend to sit on fecal matter and all sorts of things and then amoeba through that flies wings or legs then these flies can come in the home or can sit somewhere and infect the food or some surface and it can enter your body from there so that's what is a mechanical carrier it's simply like a postman who does not like have any kind of a connection with uh, the carrier or the message so right don't it transmits the parasite from infected persons feces or fecal matter it carries the parasite from infected persons fecal matter to food to food and other products other products okay drinking water also can be contaminated at times because when people defecate in the open the chances of that fecal matter going and merging with you know water nearby in lakes ponds etc this is where they they live because they are water aquatic you know all protists live in water sir Makes what sense? about the ground water sir yes what about ground water so ground water is not that susceptible to carrying antamoeba you tell me why ground water is a highly uh, sieved you know just like your ro works ground water also might contain certain kind of chemicals that leach into the soil and more and more pollution and chemical use um, can also pollute ground water that's highly possible but mostly ground waters are very very deep down and if you're not infecting it from outside they are very good source of fresh water so mostly they don't contain ant antamoeba histolytica it has to be some surface water surface water body that is contaminated does that answer your question nabil yes sir not, i cannot say that no ground water can ever get contaminated because i told you it depends on how we are accessing the ground water okay yes sir okay very well so write down drinking water and food these two are the major source of contamination and house flies are the major uh, mechanical carriers but even without a carrier it can infect you if you go near a contaminated water or food and the symptoms also you uh wrote right so everything is clear about ant amoeba histolytica humans are the only host in which this parasites can you see the symptoms again yes the symptoms are i don't abdominal pain and cramps just write down yeah symptoms are abdominal pain you can understand why pain because they are parasite they are causing infection they might also be secreting toxins and they are digesting the tissues degrading the tissues of intestine and you can also understand why cramps when the number of these increases because amoeba how does amoeba uh, um, uh, replicates <laughs> yes right so by that in, a number increases infection increases and cramps and third is stools with excess mucus and blood clots you understood why excess mucus and blood clots 
and this is also clear correct constipation also happens in so initial stages the person feels constipated sir is it possible to have both constipation and diarrhea sir because this one causes amoebic dysentery but also causes constipation so dysentery uh, it's not like dysentery it, it's possible that dysentery starts with a constipation like in amoebic dysentery it's possible that in few some some humans um that on day 1 they are actually constipated because whenever any tissue it's like simple so um, intestines are you know under an attack from a pathogen a parasite right so whenever we have an infection in the stomach there are either two responses constipation which is like the intestines movement restricts and diarrhea or loose motions where the movements are excess and vigorous and body wants to throw everything which is uh, not which is toxic out so these are the two responses so it is possible but they cannot happen at the same time right because they are opposite to each other i think that's very intuitive that's obvious right abhi yes sir yeah okay everyone clear safulla done with the symptoms yes sir yes now let's come to some um, worms now so these were protozoa we have studied bacteria we have studied virus and we have studied some protozoans now let's come to worms so you know about round worm people yes uh, yes worms in biology are known as helminths okay what are they called helminths helminths now if you go back to class 11th now it will make more sense to you because you have studied two kind of worms platyhelminthes and askhelminthes platyhelminthes and askhelminthes remember studying flat worms and round worms yes, yes sir i hope you people won't mind if i eat during the class namit no sir i just no, eat a sandwich sorry what i just eat a sandwich myself so. very good yeah so i have this oreo this last couple of oreos so they go bad they get they go stale eat when they are crispy that's where they are the best yes so you have studied askelminthes and platyhelminthes remember class 11th animal yes, kingdom sir. so platy means flat and helminthes means worms so flat worms ask means round askelminthes means round worms so here also we are going to study about helminths and specifically askelminthes which is askaris you know askaris askaris is round worm and this is pathogenic to human okay so askelminth is askaris is a round worm and there is one more worm let's take both of them simultaneously it's called vukereria this is the scientific name vukereria commonly it's called as filarial worm so these two worms are in your syllabus Ascaris round worm, Bukereria filarial worm, but both are worms, so they both belong to helminths. Both are round worms, and about Ascaris, right down, the disease that it causes is called Ascariasis. Most of these diseases are named just by the pathogen only, so it's called. For example, amoeba was causing amoebiasis, so Ascaris will called uh, will cause Ascariasis. So right down, Ascaris is a intestinal parasite. Again, and causes Ascariasis. Okay, so let's first write about Ascaris. Uh, by the way, do you know that there are many worms that 
actually live in your intestine and you're not aware of it. Every human's intestine has, uh, has, is hosting flatworms. Most commonly the tapeworm. No. You know that? No? Okay. Let me tell you about this. So don't get creeped out, but don't also let go, don't get freaked out as well. So the point is, we as humans in our intestine, also in the liver sometimes, we have liver flukes. Now, unless and until they are causing some parasitic damage to us, we have no problem. So in uh, mostly... I'll say, I don't know if there'll be someone who's not exposed, specifically if you're living in a country where you are exposed to a lot of roadside food, which is not that hygienic, you might get the, the eggs or the spores of these worms and tapeworm, many kind of bacteria, they start living in your gut. So there's a whole flora and fauna. It's called gut flora and gut fauna. So your gut has a lot of pathogens. Uh, sorry, a lot of uh, microorganisms. Now, they are not pathogen until they are not harming us. So if there is something living in your gut, taking a little bit of nutrition from it, but not causing any major harm to you, you will not mind, right? Will you mind? No, certainly not. All right. Now, even if you mind, you cannot do anything, right? So it's there. They are there. And these bacteria sometimes are called very important gut bacteria. And uh, they are so important that sometimes they may come, not sometimes, but mostly in all of us, there are our gut bacteria have a relationship with us where they make very useful products that we utilize in our body and we give them food and shelter. So it's a trade-off. It's like they are our tenants. We are posting them inside. They are helping us to digest certain things or to give us certain uh, nutritional values like vitamin B12 is etc etc and then we give them in return security and a place to live but when they start causing problems there they become pathogenic and parasitic they cause disease so in ascariasis write down the symptoms of ascariasis so there is internal bleeding from the intestines ascariasis internal bleeding Muscular pain. Fever. And when there is internal bleeding, whenever there is bleeding of any sort in any condition, what will happen? Your hemoglobin level will go. Down. And what is that condition called? Uh, low BP. Hey, uh, low BP? Low BP is blood pressure. When the pressure of the blood running in your veins go down. BP, blood pressure. Hemoglobin, when it goes down, what it's called? Low hemo. Anemia. You have not studied sickle cell anemia? Yes, sir. Anemic conditions, anemic women. So uh, I also told you, yes, Alia, correct, anemia. I also, we discussed that in developing nations where nutrition is not proper, females uh, in their reproductive age, when they are menstruating, often undergo a, a, a constant anemia that's called um, menstruation-induced anemia in their body. Because every month they are losing blood, but they're not forming it at the same pace. So their hemoglobin level stays low, mostly. Okay. That's not a disease condition, but that's causing the similar kind of symptoms. So in ascariasis, internal bleeding happens and anemia develops. And right on next point. Uh, uh, in this also, in ascariasis also, infected person's fecal matter, infected person's fecal matter can contaminate can contaminate soil, water, plants, food, etc. Soil, water, plants, food, etc. So here also, there is no need as such of a, of a vector. If flies 
sit on something which is contaminated by the eggs, they might carry the eggs of Ascaris and bring it to a healthy person. And now the healthy person also gets infected or the healthy person can also get infected through contaminated water, food, vegetables, etc., fruits, etc. So you know, just clean them properly, treat the water properly before drinking and cook your food properly before eating. That's all. So is Ascarius is clear? It's simple. Not it's easy. Most of the things are just like um, amoeba, like ant amoeba histolytic. Okay, clear. So nearly all the infections yes, they cause fever. Sir. Yes, it's it's universal. So as I told you before, also infection causes induces fever because fever is kind of a defense mechanism, uh, inflammatory re reaction from the body. So you know the difference between inflammation and infection, Nabil. So, so, uh, in fact, inflammation is uh, self-induced. It is caused by the body. Yes. So it's like someone attacks. It's like in a war, there is an attack and there is a defense, right? And sometimes the mode of defense is to attack. Attack is the best defense, they call it, right? Yes, sir. So if um, in a war, something is attacking, let's say one country is attacking another country, the other country will not just defend by you know, just staying there. It will also counter attack. So what happens is when bacteria or pathogens attack a body to cause any kind of infection, bacterial, viral, protozoan, worm induced, anything, toxin induced, the body also shows some responses to kill those pathogens. Now, one of the responses, which is a constant response in all sorts of infections, is to show inflammatory response through increasing the body temperature. Because what are we achieving by increasing the body temperature? The body wants to make these bacteria and these pathogens inactive because most of the enzymes and proteins that these pathogens secrete are mostly active at the body temperature. Does it make sense? Because they're yes, infecting the body, so they will, you know, uh, be active in the body temperature. If you raise the body temperature, many of these enzymes either become very slow in action or they get degraded. Now, the body gets a time to mount a response in the meanwhile, if you slow down the enemy, okay, if you kill the kill some of the enemy, some fraction of the enemy. Now, fever cannot kill all the pathogens, but it yes, it is a it is a inflammatory response. Is it clear, Nabil? Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Now let's come to Vukereria. The, the full name is Vukereria Bancrofti. You just have to know uh, Vukereria. But for the sake of CRT, I think, let me just tell you that there are two Bancrofti and Malai. So these are the two species of Vukereria that are known to be pathogenic. Um, and they are, both are called filarial worms. Now, filarial, Vukereria is very different from Ascariasis. You know, Ascariasis, the moment it attacks, like it infects your body, it causes infection. Vukereria, on the other hand, is, it's, it causes very slow, chronic inf infection and inflammation in the body. Okay, so Vukereria worms live for years they grow with it, like they actually, you grow with the, you're growing with the worm, but you will not know. For years, they will stay in some organs, slowly and slowly, very slowly. So the host will not know until uh, it's too late. Um, you often see that they start, uh, we start seeing the effects when the infection is spread already, but uh, it's very slow developing. So what happens is, the limbs basically. So, uh, Vukereria affects lymphatic vessels. You know what is lymphatic nodes and lymphatic we vessels? Carry limb. yes. we carry so, you know what is lymph, everyone? Shall I just go through it quickly? Yeah, yes, sir. yes, sir. Some amount. So, you know that we have a closed circulatory system, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. 
what do we mean by closed circulatory system uh blood flows in the body through discrete passages or tubes or pipes yes exactly. blood always stays in some pipes in our body which we call as arteries and veins we also call them blood vessels okay or capillaries so artery veins and capillaries the smallest are called capillaries now these capillaries are so small so thin that they are just one single layer single cell layer thin now sometimes rbcs cannot pass through the gaps because rbcs have a fixed shape so they stay in the blood vessels all the time but some plasma some fluid from the blood and some white blood cells because white blood cells just act like amoeba they can change their shape and they move wriggle around like amoeba and they can pass from very small small holes so these uh, white blood cells and the plasma of the blood they leak from from the capillaries now this leak is very 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 minimal but over the time it can accumulate and where are they leaking out they are leaking out in the surrounding tissues where the blood vessel is yes or no yes sir so because it has no rbcs the color of the lymph is almost colorless okay it's not red like blood but it is a part of blood so if this leak happens for weeks and months you can just imagine that some amount of fluid from the blood will be lost and will deposit in the muscles yes or no that is not yes, good sir. and if you are living for years that is at not at all good so there is a mechanism in our body which is called the lymphatic system now lymphatic system collects all these fluid which is now called lymph so lymph is not blood it is formed from blood but it just contains some wbcs you know and uh, plasma and platelets and other factors Protein. sorry proteins some small proteins so big proteins also cannot pass very easily but yes there are smaller proteins here which are your factors like clotting factors and all these things so they are there so this this lymphatic system collects all this fluid and take it back to any main artery or vein to bring it back to the circulatory system now there are various stations called nodes lymph nodes which uh, through which this lymphatic system works now these lymph nodes are called nodes because they are like nodes if you know where is a lymph node in your body for example at this junction you know and where our elbow meets there are lymph nodes also at your in your armpit region there are nodes lymph nodes if you know exactly where they are you can feel some of your lymph nodes so these lymph nodes get infected now is it clear what is lymph node Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, are they always filled with lymph fluid? Yes, yes, they are because constantly things are leaking and constantly they are collecting and putting them back in the main channel. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. So these lymphatic vessels, mostly, majorly of the lower limbs, like in your legs, thighs, and um, calf, etc. So they get infected in this disease. caused by vukereria so it's called filarial worm so the disease is known as filariasis filariasis now in filariasis the symptom is there's these lymph nodes get infected and get enlarged whenever lymph nodes get infected they get enlarged they swell up swelling happens severe swelling happens and they swell up so much that if the lymph nodes of the leg gets infected and inflamed by vukereria the leg of the human will look like the leg of a elephant have you seen the leg of an elephant very thick leg with folds of skin it looks like so elephant's leg looks like looks like it's swelled up but for that matter the whole elephant is so big that it needs big swelled up legs to sustain its weight but if you see a elephant like leg very thick leg in in uh, swelled up leg in humans the reason might be filariasis and because of this same reason this disease is also known as elephantiasis
in hindi may it's called hathi pao the person is suffering from hathi pao hathi pao is simply means the the leg of an elephant so elephant yes is okay is it clear everyone yes sir yes so in this what happens legs undergo gross deformities leg thigh region and also the sexual organs are affected the groin region is also affected so uh, genitals basically the penis and the testes they also get affected severely um okay so write down the symptoms first of filariasis first of all write down uh, filaria filariasis is a slow developing chronic inflammation of the organs sir can aap uh, can this infection inflammation be treated afterwards i am i'm not very sure about uh, the treatment part i have not followed up on it so it will be great if you can see and let us know but what i know is uh, beyond a, a specific deformity that has happened because lymph nodes swell up and they if there is gross deformity in the tissues it is mostly very difficult to completely treat it and bring the leg, leg back to original thing like the original shape okay but uh, again like i i just know, know that i've only come across severe cases where the deformity is very very gross but it can be treated if you get to know of this inflammation at early stages in the lymph nodes where they are not swelled up to that level so some intra like the localized injections that can help you killing this worm might help but once it has progressed i'm not sure how much is it possible to bring the back bring back the person to a normal state okay that that you, i'll also look up and you also look up okay nabil yes sir yeah yeah <clears throat> now write down it's a slow developing chronic inflammation of the organs over years over so years chronic means it is yes. genetics or uh, no 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 or so there are two words acute and chronic thank you for bringing it up let's discuss this as well so in in diseased in in, in the field of disease you will find two words do you know what is the uh, full form of sars we just studied above sars covid yes sir what is sars severe acute severe. severe acute respiratory syndrome right so you have this word acute there so the word acute means like on a it acts at a faster scale time scale so some diseases are acute for example uh, body cannot stay with them for very long either the body dies or the disease heals that's called acute diseases chronic is where body can sustain with the disease for a very long time for example diabetes is a chronic metabolic disorder do you understand now yes sir heart attack liver failure there can be chronic liver damage which happens over years if a person is abusing substance or uh, um, drinks more than um, like over excess alcoholism that that causes chronic liver damage but there can also be uh, let's say heart attacks let's say they are acute right it's not like you can just be yes, in a sir. heart attacks mode for very long so some things are acute madiha has a good question sir does acute exactly mean frequent occurrence or something that happens at a faster pace acute means um, which can only Stay, sustain in the body for a shorter period okay madhya so there are two things that happen in acute disorders either the disorder gets healed or the person or the or the organism dies but both the decision happens relatively faster body cannot stay with that disease for very long as i said okay for example sars 
covid covid is a very acute disease Bacteri uh, virus infects you it's not like after 20 years you will get to see any response but aids on the other hand is not acute all the time sometimes people who are hiv positive can have a normal life without any symptoms for even for years it has been seen in people where they do not get any symptom they are hiv positive but do not get any symptoms for 10 years 11 years the virus is there sitting inside but doing nothing you know and one day it will start showing up some effects so that's chronic the body is living with that diabetes is chronic blood pressure is chronic you know but covid covid happens right you are infected you will show uh, severe symptoms and covid also either you heal with covid in the coming one month or two months or the person you know submits to the disease and dies of covid do you understand madhya now does that answer your question so it does not mean uh, it happens frequently but it means that um, when it happens something or the other will be decided in a very short frame okay so here um, this is what i was saying can someone repeat what what did i just say where does so we were talking about acute and chronic stuff. sorry come again we were talking about acute and chronic diseases uh, no no what did i say? what did i dictated for the career area where this chronic word is you said it was a chronic inflammation that takes place in the lower limbs of the body ah, yes yes it's a slow it's slowly developing chronic um, disease oh, sorry inflammation of the organs okay usually of the lymphatic vessels so organs by organs mean various organs there are lymphatic vessels or lymphatic nodes present so infection of the lymphatic vessel. So chronic is which stays for a longer time. Is it clear, Saiful? Yes, sir. You ask this? Okay. So acute versus chronic. Mostly, you know, lethal diseases, very, very lethal diseases that, you know, may uh, take a person's life very fast are acute. If something is acute, then treating it becomes urgent. Either you treat it or you die. Okay. And if it's something is chronic, but, but, yeah. Tell me. Sir, but common cold is also acute, right? Yes, but it's 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 a non-fatal acute infection. Infections can also be non-fatal. No, every infection is not fatal. For that matter, a pimple or an acne is also a skin infection. Yes or no? Do you understand, Nabil? We are talking about some yes, major sir. diseases here. Yeah. So if something is a major disease and fatal, and if it's chronic, the treatment becomes very, very important, like uh, crucial. Either you cure it or you will die. But if something is chronic, let's say diabetes, even if we cannot cure diabetes, we can manage it. Do you understand? HIV, you can manage it. But you cannot manage COVID, right? You cannot just be with COVID. Kya COVID hai abhi, kya kar sakta? But yeah, either it should be treated or your body should heal it, or it will show it will become severe and severe, and your lungs will start getting uh, damaged more and more. So that's the difference. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Very well. Yes. Um, so write down. It affects the lower limbs, basically, resulting in resulting in gross deformities gross deformities in these organs gross deformities in these organs so causing causing uh, sorry what did i say resulting in gross deformities gross means uh, severe deformities of these organs now again for these worms now these worms are not um, transferred as worms so they are transferred as as their eggs so sometimes mosquito act as a vector but again remember they are not like plasmodium where they are dependent on the host uh, they, they are just mechanical carriers 
so female mosquitoes again because they only bite humans right you know only female mosquitoes bite the human have we discussed this in class that why why is yes, it so sir. okay we have discussed right so for nourishing yeah. eggs for nourishing their eggs yes for nourishing their eggs they need human blood for their embryos not for themselves what is the diet of mosquitoes for themselves what do they feed on plant sap plant sap or nectar okay from flowers perfect so sir but they uh, depend on human blood or other blood also sir there are mosquitoes that bite other uh, animals also human blood is like human skin is very very um, susceptible soft permeable you can easily but you will see that mosquitoes all often sitting for other animals the point is that their body is covered with either fur or hair you understand yes sir there are very few bare skinned animals and all those are targeted by mosquitoes specifically and specially humans okay yes sir okay very well so yes so write down it the pathogen the bukkeria either bancrofti or malai the pathogen can be transmitted to a healthy person the pathogen can be transmitted to a healthy person through mosquito bites female mosquito bites female mosquito bites okay okay so we have studied some worms any other worm which is oh yes there is one more Sorry. yes i was just coming to that so uh ring worms ringworm is the name of the disease okay it they are not worms you understand so that's that's the catch so often we think so this was a, this is a neat question so write down so neat question was which of the following infections is caused by worms okay or which of the following infections is not caused by worms whatever they can ask in the option if it is Escariasis, you know, it is caused by roundworm. Bukkeria, caused by filarial worm. Okay, so they will write it as escariasis, filariasis, and ringworms. So you will see, okay, ringworms already has the name worm in it. So ये तो worm से ही होता होगा, correct? You understand? But the interesting thing is that ringworms are caused by microsporums the fungi basically so fungi there are two types of fungi that cause ringworm and ringworm ringworm is a very common infectious disease you you know how does ringworm looks so it's like skin diseases where the skin gets flaky and itchy and infected and then you apply some cream antifungal cream so that this goes away Do you understand? It's like lesion with intense itching, so intense itching that you cannot control the itching. And because it's caused by fungi, and fungi needs hot and humid environment, so during the summers or the rainy season, ringworms thrive. It affects the infects the skin folds, and causes mostly the areas which always stay damp and humid, like the skin folds, like the fold. in the arm all the areas where you, you say that there are skin folds like behind the ear you know these neck region your eyelids the genital areas armpits uh, all these regions are more susceptible to ringworms is it clear yes sir but yes, ringworms are not caused by worms just remember that okay nabil so right down yes sir Yes, yeah, so write down uh, some pathogenic fungi. So we are now dealing with fungi. 
So <clears throat> in fungi, there is a genus known as Microspora. This genus is called Microspora because these fungi creates small spores through which they um, propagate from one place to another, they grow. So genus Microspora, is it clear? So in this genus Microspora, there are two um, fungi which we are aware of that causes infections to human. One is uh, trichophyton, trico, T-R-I-C-H-O, P-H-I-T-O-N, trichophyton, and epidermophyton. Now the name is already telling you that they are affecting what? Either the yeah, epidermis, the skin. skin, or the trichodermis. The skin folds. Again, skin basically. Is it clear? And both of these yeah. two fungi causes ringworms. Remember, ringworms are not worms or neither caused by worms. Just write it somewhere and make a star. I was just about to say that and Nabil said, yes, sir, ringworms. So is it clear? It's, it's one of the most common skin infections that happen in humans, ringworms. It can also be treated. It's not like it's not non-treatable. It's it can easily be treated. Um, so it's ringworms harmful to us. Yeah, of course, they are they are infections, right? Any infection is harmful. No infection is useful. It is fatal or lethal. No, it's not fatal or lethal. It's not fatal. It's not lethal. It can easily be cured by using. So if it's a fungal infection, you need antifungal cream. Apply it. It's very very inconvenient and you know not painful but i'll say itchy imagine irresistible itching at a place and if you itch it then you are just going to you know make it worse so that's the very very difficult part of handling it the itch and the pain if it happens in like skin folds so you can you have to fold your skin but there is an infection there so that becomes very very difficult sometimes okay but yeah but it can be cured and they often say that maintain. Yes, Nabil, tell me. Um, nothing, sir. And often, if you maintain um, personal and public hygiene, do not allow. So basically, these are infect uh, skin infections happen when uh, you do not or you you are unable to keep your skin clean and not let these pores which are on your skin grow or infect the uh, the epidermal layer. So yes. Just, uh, but it's curable. It's not fatal. Okay, Stefan. Sir, how long That's will this fungi live, sir? How long? Like, it means <clears throat> it depends how, how, what is the spread? What is the severity of the infection? If it is just at a local, like small region, you can get rid of it very fast, like within a week. Sometimes if it's very big region like the half face or on your or, or chest or somewhere on a major skin surface, it has infected a larger area, it can it, it may take a few weeks. Yeah. But they don't die like they don't. Yeah, but one thing is which I will tell you is they don't die as fast as we can kill bacteria. Even bacteria are not dying that fast nowadays, but yes. Because remember, fungi are multicellular organisms. Yeah. The only unicellular fungi is yeast. You understand? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. So it just becomes a little difficult. But write down. Uh, this is the one of the most common infections in human skin infections in human. And what happens is symptoms. Write down. Dry scaly lesions dry scaly lesions develop on skin nails nails means the nail bed okay like 
on the bed, but where the nail is connected to the skin, that region. Na uh, skin, nails, and also the scalp. It can happen on scalp hair. Scalp is nothing but the skin that has a lot of hair on it. So it's not something very special in that regard, but we just still has, just like this part of the skin, you call it palm, right? You see, this skin is very different from the this skin of your hand. Have you noticed? There yes. is no hair growth here. And what is the other differences? Basically, it's skin only, but what are the other differences? It's thicker. Yeah, it's thicker. It's thicker. Yeah. On the other hand, it's more sensitive. This is not that sensitive as compared to this one. You can tolerate more heat and cold hair, but not hair, right? So all these things are there. Same scalp is something just skin, but with some different properties. Okay. So these are the symptoms, lesions. And write down these, uh, there is intense itching. intense itching and hot and humid environment makes it spread more because it's a fungal infection hot and humid environment makes it spread spread more okay and now how do you think it spreads it's fungal infection so how do fungal infections spread? Fungal infections can spread through contact, first thing. If a person has infected skin with uh, ringworms, you would not like to go and touch with bare hands because then the fungal will come on your skin. Fungus particles will come on your skin, the spores. So it, it spreads by direct contact. So always be careful. It also spreads by using... Um, so spreads or acquired through soil okay, or shared clothing shared clothing like towel bathing towels should not be shared something like that shared clothing with the infected person again and even uh, combs, combs of infected person. Okay, is it clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, uh, um, dengue we have done. So tell me these diseases that we have studied till now. How can you get rid of such diseases like pneumonia, ascariasis? If they ask you, how can you get rid of uh, these diseases and not allow these diseases to spread? If, let's say, a disease is airborne, what can you do? Let's discuss. Wear mask. Yes, okay. One thing, very good. Wear masks and isolate the person. Whoever is infected, they should be isolated because it's airborne. Okay, right. Just like COVID, you can take an example. Of. But if something uh, needs uh, a medium, like if something is waterborne or spreads through food, then what can you do? So stay away from contaminated water and food. But, but how will you know that this water is contaminated? If you can know the water <laughs> is contaminated, you will never drink it. Disinfect the water. Yes, right. Do you understand, Sefula? That's that's a better proposition, right? Because you yes, are not sure whether the water is contaminated or not, so you be you be double sure by treating the water, by boiling the water, or or you can just use filtered water from reverse osmosis because these filters are they have very small pores, which get rid of these uh, pathogens. Okay. Yeah. And what about food? Make sure people wear uh, sanitary. Uh, people, uh, people who clean the food follow get sanitary measures. Like yeah. What is the? What is the? 
yeah one thing is if you are if your food has raw components they should that should be properly washed thoroughly washed for example fruits and some vegetables or salads because they might be contaminated if your food can be cooked it should be cooked properly you know like the flesh part or other things should be cooked properly because many pathogens or infections can come up from the raw rawness of the food as well so basically it's all about preparing a good food right yes sir yeah and if a disease is vector borne like not food not water not air but through a mosquito or through a house fly or something like that then use use uh try to keep a mosquito repellent yes yeah, someone else was also saying i think it was who was it ariya maimuna yes yes maimuna what, what were you saying tell me or was it madiha oh sorry yes sir. i said it yes madiha what were you saying tell me again uh, i said to keep the food and water covered to prevent contamination yes yes that's that's there but um, that's when uh, it's because of flies right so don't allow your flies don't allow these yes. house flies to land on the food very good but what if the vectors do not come through the food like mosquitoes they can directly bite you some fleas there are biting fleas or other things that can bite you and cause infection then till the breeding places use uh... use pesticides yes eliminate their breeding spaces do not let mosquitoes develop and breed around yourself and keep your places clean do not let ticks mites and all these vectors develop right do not allow stagnate yes, water to just uh, you know just prevent. so all these things are very common questions which are asked in boards so i hope you will be able to answer that after all of this so i'm not dictating all of these basic things will it is it fine so this yes how do we know uh, the ticks are may uh, when breeding because mosquitoes will do it near the water areas stagnant waters but ticks <clears throat> yeah see ticks basically start as small small spores so they all they only they are ectoparasites there's a difference so they always stay on the skin so if it is lice is like human tick you know li lices are like human ticks only so if you keep your scalp clean if you do not allow and when you when i'm saying clean we should also properly clean our skin when we are bathing you know where do lice lay eggs if someone has lice in the hair where do they lay eggs any idea mostly what is their preferred place to lay eggs on the scalp scalp that's very obvious one yes they do they, they actually do that also but one thing that we should always clean when we are taking care is the yeah, this uh, back fold of the ear where the ear is joined can you see there is a you, sometimes things get accumulated hair this skin the ear where it's joined with your head that lining is their favorite place to lay eggs okay so you have to clean it properly and thorough so we will never know where ticks are basically uh, it's either on our pets if you have pets at home always do this um, always give them anti tick treatments make them bathe on a regular basis not daily but you know you cannot make pets bathe daily like yourself but on a, on very frequently they should be bathed and anti lice or anti ticks powder or cream should be applied basically it comes for the pets so that you destroy their breeding grounds you understand nabil and for yourself keep your hair your scalp and the ear clean okay makes sense yes sir yeah okay so if this kind of question comes you'll be able to handle it right everyone 
these common, very obvious questions if they come. Alia, Madhya, Mamuna, Maria, everyone. Yes, we'll be able to handle this. Okay. Uh, for dengue and for chikungunya, you know that Aedes mosquito is the vector. But for malaria, it's Anopheles. Just remember that also as a distinction. Okay. Um, some more things. Are we forgetting something? I'm giving you as a homework two things to study. They will not be asked in boards in detail. But just go and figure out what are pox. You all have heard of two specifically. One is smallpox, which has been eradicated, right? We are smallpox free, mostly. And one is chickenpox, which is more severe and fatal. Smallpox. And nowadays, are you also, you must have heard of another term called monkeypox, right? Yes, sir. And one another was in just news a uh, few weeks ago, tomato pox. So what are these poxes? <coughs> so in the next like, class, <coughs> which is tomorrow, you will tell me something about pox, okay? Are they infectious? How do they spread? Okay. Everyone, this is your homework. Yes. Go and find yes, something about poxes. Chicken pox, how many of you have had chicken pox as kids? I have had chicken pox when I was young. Ma'am, okay, like I'm not. Okay, anyone else? Yes. No, sir. No, Madhya. So you have some fair bit of immunity in your body. Okay, so be happy. Don't be sad about it. It's fine. Okay. So that's it for today. Let's end here. And um, in tomorrow's class, I will start uh, immunity, which is going to be another major important part for from both boards and entrance point of view. We'll talk about. So read a little bit about what is immunity. So immunities of two types, innate and acquired. If you can understand what is innate immunity, what is acquired, very good. If you cannot, no problem, no worries. We'll start from the scratch, no need to worry. Then finally, we will come to vaccines, active and passive immunities, and we'll talk about vaccine. We'll also talk about the COVID vaccines because these are the latest ones and you can be asked about it because vaccines are in your syllabus. So also, if you can find some time, read about, you all are vaccinated, right? For COVID? Do you know yes, which sir. was your vaccine? Do you know the name of the vaccine yes, and what the vaccine? There are different kinds of vaccines. So as a part of homework, just do one more thing. Find out the vaccine that has been given to you. What is that vaccine?